Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, no one watching this video should assume that I have any special knowledge or inside information. I don't. Right? This is just purely speculation and conjecture on my part after the weigh-in for the Edwin Rodriguez-Andre Ward fight. Right? Now understand, for those who don't know, this was Edwin Rodriguez's chance of a lifetime. His opportunity to win the world championship at 168 pounds. He lost that opportunity on the scales. He couldn't make weight. He came in weighing not one pound over, but two pounds over at 170. Understand, it's not just a missed opportunity in fighting for a title. But according to reports, it's actually cost him $200,000. Think about that. In an era when a lot of fighters don't make 200000 k in a fight, this guy, just in terms of a penalty to have the fight go forward, had to fork over one-fifth of his purse. Right now, what that means to us as a gambler is twofold. And I believe it both points in the same direction. And again... This is just speculation on my part, right? Do with it what you may. But understand, if hypothetically, and I don't know if this is the case, but if hypothetically Edwin Rodriguez lost a lot of weight, punished his body, until he couldn't lose another two pounds. And understand, he was given two hours to lose the two pounds, right? If his body had reached the point where it could no longer lose weight, even water weight, then that's going to hurt Rodriguez later in this fight. That makes the, the odds, the likelihood, of a stoppage in this fight increase that much more because I'm telling you when you abuse your body your body abuses you back right Edwin Rodriguez can be a hundred percent at the start of the fight his body if it's been depleted in an effort to make 168 an unsuccessful effort his body's going to have more wear and tear. It's not going to recover like it normally would as this fight progresses. Now, there's another way to look at this. And I think it points in the same direction, toward a stoppage in the fight. Let's just say, hypothetically, this is Machiavellian strategic behavior at the highest level. Let's say I'm Edwin Rodriguez, and I'm about to fight Andre Ward, and I've looked at the films of Andre Ward, and I realize Andre Ward is a dominant technician. Let's say I realize that the odds of me outboxing Andre Ward or a Floyd Mayweather are slim. Let's say, hypothetically, I understand he's faster than I am. He throws straighter punches than I do. Let's go one step further. Let's say that I realize that Dennis Grachev, not really a mover. Don George, not really a mover. That the guys I've fought who I've done well against are guys who don't move as well as Andre Ward. Now let's say that I have looked at tapes of Ward and I realize Ward has been dazed in some fights. He's even been dropped. So let's say that I reached a conclusion that my best chance of pulling the upset is to do so by stoppage. 
right? If this is actually a scoring match over 12 rounds, he's probably going to get more rounds than me. But if I can land, especially the kind of looping punches that are hard to duplicate in sparring, these Ken Norton type punches, you know, that kind of like can destroy a fighter who normally blocks where the punch should be, not the looping angle that I'm throwing it at, right? Let's say also, hypothetically, that my last fight wasn't at 168. That my last fight was at a catch weight of 171.5. And that the super middleweight title might not mean that much to me because I privately know I can't make super middle anymore. Let's say it's such a struggle that that super middleweight title means about the same to me as the middleweight title would mean to Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., right? It's such a struggle to get there that I might say, you know what, going forward, I'm going to fight at 175. But how many times am I going to get the opportunity to fight Andre Ward after a huge layoff? How many times am I going to get the opportunity to fight a guy who's widely regarded as one of the best in the sport pound for pound. Some would say the only guy in the Andre Ward area code is Floyd Mayweather. Right? So, a cynic might argue that if I'm Edwin Rodriguez, maybe I plan on coming in just a little over. Right? Maybe my real goal here is to come in as strong as possible because I know that my best shot is to win by knockout. I know that my best shot is to physically impose myself on Andre Ward, push him around the ring, and go for broke. Right? Now, if you're a cynic, then you'll believe that Edwin Rodriguez, who doesn't have that hard a punch, is coming in looking for a stoppage. That he's not losing those two pounds because he wants the advantage that he gets from those two pounds. That his body isn't depleted. Rather, he's comfortable where he is. Right? That he'd rather be comfortable in the biggest fight of his career than uncomfortable and that he understands that his best chance is to hit a home run. Based on Rodriguez missing weight by multiple pounds, right? Two pounds. Think about that. Right? I think the under Nine and a half, which is high because both of these guys have gone the distance a lot of late. But I believe the under nine and a half at not even money, but a plus 260. Right? Bet a dollar to win $2.60 in profit plus the return of your dollar. I think the odds of that happening have just gone up. You know, I like to hedge bet. All I'm saying to you is the under nine and a half rounds at plus 260 needs to be something you consider adding to your bet portfolio. Let me go one step further. Let's say I'm a right-handed fighter. Let's say I've had shoulder problems. Let's say that I'm so good that there have been times in fights where if my right hand was healthy, I might have ended the fight. Let's say I'm so good that I've developed my left and I've developed timing and coordination where in fights I sometimes switch to the left hand. Let's say my right shoulder is now fixed and I don't have to switch. In fact, let's say this shoulder is now stronger than I can remember because it's been injured for years. 
Could you imagine fighting, let's say, Floyd Mayweather? And Mayweather hasn't even had full use of his right hand because of a shoulder injury. Gets that shoulder prepared and now has a right hand. That's normal. That might be the story right now, folks, with Andre Ward. Right? Ward may well have gone from having an injured right hand to now having a lethal one. The film on Ward might not accurately portray Ward's surgically repaired current right hand. Right? I believe that that also increases the possibility of a stoppage in this fight. Especially since, and we don't know, but especially since, Rodriguez, if you believe the narrative that he's been struggling to lose weight, if Rodriguez's body isn't what it normally is, right, given that this fight is a 12-round fight, and given that Rodriguez's last fight was only a one-round fight, right, Maybe a ward right hand ends this, right? Maybe Rodriguez has prepared based on, and I know he has a great corner, Ronnie Shields, but maybe he's prepared based on films of Andre, in which, of course, Andre had an injured right shoulder, right? Maybe ward with a healthy right shoulder is even more lethal. So... The over-under is high here, nine and a half. That's the midway point of the 10th round, right? That's half a round more than a 10-round fight. And the casinos are giving you a plus 260? Let's just say that that's the play I'm recommending here. We'll see what happens, but you need to understand the risk, and it's substantial. I mean substantial. If this fight goes further than the midway point of the 10th round, you lose it all. Let me make a further recommendation for more cautious hedge, hedge bettors like me. Consider Andre Ward by KO at one to two. When it rains, it pours. Consider Andre Ward by KO at one to two, hedged with the under nine and a half rounds at plus 260. Understand the hedge is possible. And even if the fight goes further than the midway point of the 10th round, if Andre Ward is able to close the show, if Rodriguez is depleted and is worn out and gets stopped late, then the hedge holds. If Andre Ward closes the show earlier, then you win both sides of the bet. If Edwin Rodriguez closes the show within the first nine and a half rounds, the hedge holds. Think it through. Do the math. Thanks for stopping by.